the composers contest, the the flute the flute view composers contest, and we will pre, uh, have a performance of that piece uh, in June the, at on the flute view day. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, right, because right. I think yes. it's a great idea. Yes. yes. And um, I think original uh, piece by Viviana Guzman, original piece by Flute Scooter. And or so piece by Barbara Cecil. Original piece. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I gotta get all my electronics lined up though. We have to discuss. Ah, original piece. <laughs> I can and I can see that. Be my, it will be my composition debut, but I have been working on this piece and it's really a thrilling experience. So Good. I love this opportunity. Yes. Cool. Yeah. cool. Yeah. That'll be fun. Totally. Well, also, our composers contest, any composers out there, you have until April 1st to get us your composition. Um, something for three flutes. Um, you can use piccolo, alto flute. Um, you can put electronics. Um, and about five minutes in length. Oh, it's Joanna. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Anyway, the information for the composer contest is on the website. I think the computer in front of me is probably too old or something. So. Aww. Apologies for the technical difficulties. Oh, no worries. We're so happy to see you, Joanna. Joanna. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joanna, you are a true maverick with what you've been doing uh, with your online Just Another Flutist uh, flute uh, YouTube channel. And you also I have... Wish it was YouTube. That would yeah. be awesome. <laughs> I think we just created something. Yeah. <laughs> Let's register the domain right now, flutetube.com. That's anyway. a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you also have your performance channel, which is just another flautist, right? Yes. Awesome. Um, and you do just these fabulous, very fun, um, hilarious little videos. I mean, so how did you first get this idea? What, what inspired you to start this? Okay, well... Um, it, it actually started uh, probably prior to when I even started making videos myself because um, back in high school for me around 2006, 2007 was sort of the birth of YouTube. And with the birth of YouTube actually came the birth of the YouTuber. So, I mean, at first it was just, you know, cat videos and stuff like that. There weren't really anyone making original content or anything. So... Um, the rise of the YouTuber didn't really come up until around 2008, 2009. Mm. And I was actually just watching, um, I'm just going to name a couple of YouTubers here. Um, one is Michelle Fawn. She's a huge um, Asian American uh, makeup guru. Um, uh -huh. and yeah, and so she's gotten to the point now where she was really just making videos in her bedroom. And now she's working with Lancome and she... <laughs> Um, she's come out with her own makeup line now as well. It's like high-end makeup now. It's pretty inspiring. Are you wearing her makeup today? I wish I could afford it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, that's stellar. Yeah. So it, it's, it's fantastic. Um, so I've been watching Michelle Fawn. I've been watching uh, Wong Fu Productions, uh, Niga Higa, Kev Jumba, uh, Happy Slip. These are all sort of YouTubers from... 2008, 2009-ish. Um, Wong Fu has sort of made it now where right now they're actually doing their first major feature film. Wow. So they're actually getting their own subscribers like myself to um, actually support them in this endeavor, which is super exciting. Um, so... Transmedia? This is Transmedia. Yeah, this right? is basically yeah. everything is happening on YouTube. There's like a whole YouTube community. So... Um, I actually was just watching these people as a viewer. Um, I didn't even have a YouTube channel to subscribe to them. I just watched them. I just would just search up their videos and watch. So I was sort of a lurker, you could say. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I like didn't you know like their videos, didn't comment, nothing. Um, and so, um, but I kept showing my parents and my brother these sort of hilarious, you know, original content videos. They were skits. Sometimes they just talk to the camera about their experiences with life and stuff like that. Huh. So then um, basically I just um, kept showing my family these videos. And then they kind of looked at me one day and was like, well, why don't you give it a try? You know, you talk a lot. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it happened. Um, I sort of fell into it in, at around 2010. 
Huh. Um, so uh, that was actually the the inspiration behind my videos was just I wanted a YouTuber that was a classical musician. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted. And I couldn't find that. And so I decided to give it a shot myself. Um, so yeah, th that is the inspiration behind my wow. YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. you're the, the first yeah. classical cool. YouTuber. You could say that. I mean, that is a heavy <laughs> load to put on. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it is, um, you know, it's very rewarding. You know, uh -huh. the, the subscribers are absolutely fantastic and just incredibly intelligent. They ask really good questions. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, I saw that. They te they a lot of them are like flute students too. They they know a lot yeah. about flute or serious yeah. flute flute students. I was actually um surprised that I ended up reaching these people because um I mean initially when I came out with how to blow into the flute and flute 101, I actually didn't think that I would actually make tutorials because on YouTube, there are like hundreds and of thousands of tutorials. Not that all of them are so good, although that's my only my opinion. But, you know, the thing is that there's so many tutorials out there that I didn't want to be one of them um, because I figured, you know, people can just learn off of them. But then um, I actually started to get subscribers asking me to make tutorials after they had been watching sort of what I call my on-site vlogs. Mm -hmm. video blogs mm -hmm. so I just bring the camera around with me and just film myself being a musician mm -hmm. and they wanted me to do tutorials so that's kind of how it happened I mean in a way you could almost say that it was my subscribers fault that, <laughs> <laughs> that the, the tutorials okay. happened yeah. so I don't you know it, it has been surprising actually to me that I have been able to reach um young music students mm -hmm. um and encourage them. So that that has been very surprising, but extremely rewarding. So oh, that's great. That's yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just did my, my very first tutorial as well, and it was as a response of somebody who said, "How do you get the double tonguing better?" And I was like, oh, "Okay, I'll do. I have a YouTube for you. <laughs> I'll put it up <laughs> soon for you." So yeah. yeah, it's interesting how where the inspiration comes from. I, I recently, Joanna, saw uh, one of your latest ones. Well, I saw your the the webcast that you just did too. <laughs> yes, yes. That uh, was yeah. That was actually uh, inspired by the other YouTubers. Um, YouTubers will frequently do live shows. Um, right. A lot of them do live shows on a different um, website. Uh, Twitter has a live uh, thing that you could do a live video Platform. feed that you could do. Yeah. Um, okay. There's okay. something. Yeah. There's something called You Now. There's a, there's a whole bunch of different ones out there, and different YouTubers use different ones, but I just decided that I wanted just to keep it all on YouTube, so I ended up doing my webcast there. So that's how that I, I like your tag videos, too, like your 50-question one. Uh, 50 <laughs> questions about music, I think, is what you did, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so that is also another very YouTube-y thing. Um, uh, the, it's a these whole are culture. Yeah, it is actually it is, yeah. a whole culture. It's it's kind of insane. Um, and you know, I've been living in this culture for you know a good couple of years now. Why so are you taking notes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they are cute. These tags are really really cute. Um, so I was tagged by uh, pianist Miri. Yeah, I know um, her. Yeah, I mean, I've seen her channel too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, it was kind of funny how we met. We actually didn't know that we were YouTubers, uh, we were paired together for a gig in Vancouver and um, didn't know that the other person was a YouTuber until we were actually checking our own Twitter feeds and yeah. stuff like that and you know, doing very YouTuber type things and um, realized that the other person was a YouTuber. And so that's how we became friends. Um, and then uh, yeah, that that was insane how that happened. So yeah, she guested you on her channel, and then you guested her on her channel. Yeah, you know, back yeah. And forth. So th that's how that happened. So she tagged me in this video, and this video I think has a uh, beauty origins. A lot of the the beauty world in YouTube loves doing these kinds of tags. They do oh, my boyfriend yeah. does my makeup tag. I've seen those. Yeah, yeah the blindfolded <laughs> makeup tag. 
the <laughs> 20 color makeup tag. So a lot of these tags have sort of, because Miri is really into the beauty stuff too. So like we watch the exact same beauty and fashion uh, YouTubers as well. Hmm. So I it, check it out. I need help. You know, <laughs> it's not, it's not just watch it. Not that I take all of the advice, but it's just beautifully shot. You know, a lot of the the YouTubers out there are. It's just fantastic. So, um, sorry, this is I'm learning just so many different things. You know, we're all involved with video on one level or the other, and there are just so many things to know about now. Yeah, it's really has been amazing to watch this stuff develop. Because mm -hmm. I was watching Michelle Fawn from when she was making videos in her bedroom, you know, and now she has a full on studio. She works in both L.A. and New York at the same time. Wow. It's insane. What? Yeah. How many, how many um, followers do you have to your channel now? Why don't we check? It kind of yeah. changes every day. Ah! I think it's like 10,000 yeah. or, or more than 10,000. Uh, not yet. Not quite there yet. Um, because the subscriber rate, it's sort of, you could say, it rises exponentially.